and it's on and twice and it's off. The whole reason for doing this video on the Vado sensory digital shower control that you can see here is because when I was looking at purchasing it, I couldn't find anything on the internet that was of any use whatsoever. Even the manufacturer's videos basically showed that it was a shower control and if you used it, water came out of the shower. And I did want to know a lot more than that because of the price that you've got to pay for it. Hence this video. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's have a look in more detail. A quick overview of the system first. So we've got a, a rainforest head there. We've got a separate shower head and we've got the control unit. Now the control unit is married to a 34 kilowatt combi boiler or about 120,000 BTU boiler. It's a high pressure system, so fed from the mains and it works absolutely perfectly. And all that's built into a lovely little walk-in shower enclosure. One of the funkiest things about the control unit is it comes with a remote control. You can't get better than that. Now, one of the best things about this is because you can place it anywhere in the bathroom, it means you can turn the shower on before you get in. So it's warmed up and you haven't got wet reaching across to the panel to, uh, to turn it on in the first place. So let's see it in operation. All right, so we've currently got it set up so that the shower head's outlet one and the rainforest head is outlet two. And all you do is just press it once and it'll turn on outlet one. Press it once again, it'll turn it off. And the same for the shower head, uh, for the rainforest head. Press it twice for that one because it's shower outlet two and twice for off. So press it once. And it's on. Press it once again and it's off. And now we'll do the rainforest head twice. And it's on and twice. And it's off. So no more getting a cold shower before it becomes warm. And so how does it work? Well, there's no pipes behind here. Basically, you've got a data cable in the wall behind here that goes to a, a valve box, which opens and closes to allow whichever head you want working and also controls the temperature. Uh, you can put that box anywhere within reason. And I'll show you pictures of it as well. The actual control unit itself couldn't be any easier. Uh, if you press that, then basically the last shower that was on will come on, whether that be the shower head or the um, rainforest head. These control each of the individual heads and you can have them both on at the same time if you want. This is the temperature control up or down, and this is the flow of water control. You just decrease it or increase it as you want. The heads that you can see there, uh, I think there's about six different pictures of heads. I'll show you that in a minute, but this is fully customizable. And there's lots of safety features in there as well. If you hold the two temperature buttons together, it sets up a customizable menu. Right, so that's the menu. Let's have a look at that. So this is the customizable menu and you can flip through it by just coming down. You can see the arrow going down. Let's go back up and go through each one. So you can set the maximum shower temperature to do that. Click that and then you can raise it or lower it so that that's the maximum temperature that it'll run at. So there's no scalding basically. And then let's accept that. And we'll come down to the next one, which is the maximum shower time. This is a good one. So basically it can't be left on. So if we accept that, you've got five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So you can set it for as long as, well, not as long as you want. I think the maximum is 30. I'm going to run that down to five. You can always start it again if you're in for longer than five minutes. So we'll accept that. Next one is the default shower temperature. So this is the one that it starts at every time. We've got that set at 38 degrees, accept that. The default shower flow. So we've got that set at maximum. So as soon as you switch it on, it's going to be the maximum shower flow. Next one is 
Next one is the default outlets. So this is basically which one is used as the uh, as the initial one that comes on. So we've got it set as number two, which is the, the rainforest head, except that. And then last but not least, well, there is a touch sensitivity one, but that's pretty irrelevant. Um, we've got the outlet icons. And if you choose that, and we'll go across to number two, accept that. So I've got it set up there, you can see the type of head that we've got, which is the rainforest, but you can change that to anything. I'm not sure what that one is. That's just a standard show ahead. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. Not sure what that one is. And that's similar to the one, the other one that we've got. So you can set it up however you want. Let's just go for that one again. So that's that done. And let's go back again. And let's go back. And now we're on the main screen again. So you can see how easy it is to control when you're in the shower, if you want it warmer or colder, use the temperature buttons. If you want more water or less water coming out, use the floor buttons. And if you want to switch heads, simply press one of either of those. It's that easy. But what a fantastic system. This is the unit when it's in standby. Uh, that's when it's ready to be operated. You can get these for low pressure systems or high pressure systems. As I said, this is a high pressure system. And you can also get them for a single outlets. You don't need a double outlet like this. It's, you just have it, whatever system you've got, and get the one that's right for you. And this is the back office view, so to speak. This unit here is the manifold. That's the uh, brains of it. Well, sorry, the control panel's the brains of it. This is the brawn of it. It just mixes the water that comes in and lets it out of the temperature and place where you want it to. You've got your cold and hot water inputs and you've got your two outlet pipes there as well. So nice and simple and we just need to get that boxed in there. Right, let's have a closer look at the remote control. So this is the unit. It's actually detachable from the bracket that you can fix to the wall. So this is the bracket for the wall. You can either screw it on or there's various fixings that come with it. What I'm probably going to do is probably Velcro it on a self-adhesive Velcro pad on the back and put that onto a tile somewhere. And then as I say, all you do is that attaches like that. And if you want to move it around the bathroom for whatever reason, just take it off and pop it back on. The unit itself is powered by a battery and the back just screws off there, just screws off, battery goes in, back on, and then it's watertight again. And that is a nice, simple remote control for the shower controller. One of the original reasons for looking at the shower control in the first place was I wanted a, a digital control to fill the bath and I was going to use outlet one for the bath and then outlet two for the shower head. Um, went against that because on the bath you also want a shower head on the bath as well so that would have meant three outlets required so we had to move away from it. And the other reason was I just love tech and gadgets so that is an absolutely fantastic thing to have in the bathroom. Would I recommend it to anybody? I would recommend it until the cows come home because how many of us hate sticking the hand into the shower, turning it on, getting wet through with cold water. Uh, this way you don't have to do it, it's remote control. You can see the temperature on there, the temperature is so controllable. So is it a recommendation? It's a definite recommendation. And I wish that the manufacturers would just do better videos to show people the benefits of getting a digital controller like that.